Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. We'll hear remarks from Minister Tyler Shandro, Minister of Health. Also joining us today uh, virtually is Susie Vanderwick, Executive Director of Cure SMA Canada. And then we'll go to the phone for questions and answers. Thank you. Minister Shandro. Good morning, and thank you, Michelle. I'm uh, pleased to be able to make an announcement this morning that will have a real impact on a small number of families in uh, Alberta that have been waiting for good news related to their children's health. In the last several months, the stories of Alberta children who are impacted by spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA, have been shared in the news and to, over social media. And I, I want to um, thank everyone for um, drawing attention to, uh, to this disease through, through traditional and, and social media and uh, all the news that we've heard over the last few months in particular. SMA is a, a rare genetic d d uh, disease that affects a, a small number of children and adults in Canada, or about one in 6,000 babies who are born. The disease uh, affects muscles used for motor activities like establishing and, and maintaining a head and neck control, sitting, crawling, walking, uh, even swallowing. And I, I can't imagine the stress and hardship of families with a uh, child diagnosed with uh, SMA. As parents, we want what's best for our children. We want to watch them have healthy development and have every opportunity available to them. And uh, it's so difficult to understand what these families are experiencing if you're not directly impacted yourself. Families talk of their days being consumed by appointments and therapies, meticulous planning before any activity, their child's muscle weakness leading to loss of independence and then moving to the use of a manual and then motorized wheelchair. And for some families, SMA is diagnosed when their child is between three and, and six months old. When their infant child doesn't kick as enthusiastically as other babies do, or when it becomes noticeable that they can't sit or bear weight on their legs without support. And as a dad, I, I relish the moments when, um, when my kids um, would kick and they would giggle as they would respond to, to me and Andrea. And, um, I remember the, uh, the first time that uh, they sat um, by themselves and pulled themselves up by standing. And it was uh, almost as proud, I was almost as proud of these milestones as they were themselves. And I can't imagine the challenges that these folks face every day, but um, I have taken every opportunity to uh, listen and to learn from these families. Uh, until recently, there have been limited options to treat SMA. And uh, although uh, effective, available treatments require hospital visits for kids to receive drugs through a spinal tap, which can be painful, and it requires uh, maintenance dosing several times a year. Now, Zolgensma, uh, a new gene therapy, was approved by Health Canada last month. And uh, however, the, uh, the standard drug review, as well as the negotiating uh, processes, uh, aren't yet complete, so families are still waiting to hear when and how provinces across the country will cover this therapy. And for some families, this wait is excruciating because the eligibility of their kids may be at risk while these processes um, are being completed. And these families are, are so keenly aware that a potentially life-altering treatment is out there, and they have uh, been calling for access as quickly as possible. Some have been raising money themselves to access gene therapy, and many generous, generous Albertans have been willing to step up and willing to help out with this. But fundraising itself has added to the mental anguish of caring for a, a little one with SMA. So today I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to share another step forward as the Alberta government has worked with Novartis, the manufacturer, to find a way to support these families. The Alberta government will immediately fund Zolgensma on a case-by-case -case basis. For kids whose treatment eligibility may be at risk while waiting for the drug review and the uh, approval processes to be completed. And I'm, I'm very aware of the urgency of making this treatment available and uh, am pleased that we are able to provide this funding for children who may uh, slip through the cracks while waiting for the final review 
and the final approval processes. Because there, there is a process that we must follow. Uh, we will continue to, to work with our National Health Technology Agency uh, and other provinces through the, the Pan-Canadian Pharmaceutical Alliance or the PCPA. This is an organization that was created years ago by premiers of uh, the, um, the provinces and territories to help negotiate drug prices on behalf of the provinces and territories. And we, we will continue to work with the, uh, the PCPA towards a long-term agreement for access to Zolgensma for other children and their families. Some days it's, um, it's really great to, uh, to be Minister of Health, and today, uh, quite frankly, is, is one of those days. Now, before I, I open the floor to questions, I, I want to remind media that I, I can't speak about specific cases or patients or children's or, or their families, or children or their families. Uh, specialist physicians will be receiving information to, uh, to support families in determining uh, eligibility and uh, application for Zilgensma. And with that uh, reminder, I'll uh, pass it over to Susie Vanderwick, who is the Executive Director of Cure SMA Canada. And Susie, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Thank you very much for, for having us be a part of this really exciting announcement. It's something we've been striving for for these patients. We at Cure SMA Canada are thrilled to be a part of this announcement. We've um, been waiting for these patients and advocating for them. And as you stated, the time is ticking for them. Um, these families are going from a, a, a mindset of fear of what the future holds for their children and knowing that this clock is ticking to one of planning the future and, uh, and uh, making plans for the entire family because this disease does not affect just the child, it affects the family as a unit. And as you stated, parents are devastated. And, and uh, we as an organization have gone from sending out end of life packages uh, to one of um, assisting them to access treatment. And I can't tell you what that means for an entire community who is thrilled to see a change for members of our, of our group. Thank you. And, uh, and thank you so much again for, for joining us today. Thank you for um, all the work that your organization does to, to advocate for, for um, families um, across Canada. And so with that, uh, Michelle, happy to take questions. Yeah, thank you. We'll now go to the phones. Uh, operator, can you please put the first caller through? Shane Clausing, Everything GP. Yes, hi, Minister Shandrew. Uh, just, just a couple quick questions about this announcement. Uh, can the drug Zolgensma be given at home, and uh, how long has this process been going on for, uh, from the province's standpoint? Well, from the province's standpoint, maybe I'll answer in reverse order. Um, so the, the typical approval process for, for any um, drug that um, ends up wanting to be listed by a province is first of all to, to get, go through the process with Health, Health Canada. Health Canada will review with the manufacturers and, and, and um, understand from them through the application process um, the safety aspect of it. There's also the CADETH uh, process as well, C-A-D-T-H. Um, through those two federal processes, what happens is there's a focus on, on safety and efficacy to understand from the drug manufacturer um, those two questions. After that, then there is a, a technology review process that happens provincially where we, um, we uh, understand from uh, physicians and other experts um, uh, and get their advice on, um, on the, um, the decisions on, on listing a, a drug provincially here in Alberta. Um, and then, then there's the negotiating process as well. As I said, the, the PCPA, the Pan-Canadian Pharmaceutical Alliance. And, and so all these processes sometimes happen in stages. Sometimes they happen all at the same time. Um, sometimes it's, uh, it's a little bit different with uh, every manufacturer. And um, it's, uh, it can be frustrating for the families who are waiting where the eligibility might be affected by, um, by the timing um, of it being available to their, their children, like, like in this situation. Um, uh, for technical questions about how um, uh, Zolgensma as a gene therapy is, um, is, is administered, um, I, I would I'd be deferential to the, the doctors if we can follow up with you after that so we can get you the technical uh, answers on, on Zolgensma as a gene therapy and, and the, the location where it's administered um, and uh, all that technical information. be happy to get you that offline. You, operator, could you please put through the next caller? Kevin Nimick, CTV. 
Hi, Minister. I have a question and a follow-up. Uh, Alberta Health t tells us there have still been no decisions made for Phase 2 of the vaccination plan and setting priorities for who gets the shot and when. How is that possible, and why is it taking so long compared to all the other provinces that have now showed us their plans? Sure. Well, it's, it's, um, it's possible because the federal government has uh, not provided us with certainty about how many um, vaccines we're going to be getting and when we're going to be getting them, Kevin. Um, so let's remember that Alberta doesn't decide when we get vaccines and how many we, we get. The, the number of doses and uh, when we receive them is up to the federal government. For us to be able to, to look at a phase two plan and um, for, I, I expect hundreds of thousands of people, if not well over a million people to be included in phase two and how we decide who's going to be the most vulnerable and how we're going to make those decisions. We have to understand um, what uh, the, the delivery uh, schedule is going to be for those vaccines so we can make those decisions. For example, if we make a decision based on an occupation or based on, on age, based on vulnerability, uh, vulnerability to, uh, to, to um, severe outcomes with COVID, we have to look at how many of those Albertans would be uh, included in those groups and how many vaccines we'd be getting in any given week in February, March, April. And that is certainty that we have not been provided. Um, you said you had a follow up, Kevin? So Albertans are looking for the priorities, though, for phase two. And aside from the vaccine shortages from the feds over the last two weeks, are you saying that none of these priorities have been set over the last 10 months that the pandemic has existed, that the government has had time to plan for vaccination? Kevin, the um, uh, phase 1B, uh, first of all, has not even begun in this province. We've started with phase 1A. We got uh, all the vaccines that we've received into the arms for first doses to all of those vulnerable Albertans for phase 1A. I think it's been over 100,000 vaccinations have been provided. Now the, some of the people who got the first doses right at the very beginning are starting to get their second doses. Um, phase 1B then is going to start including our community seniors, those who are 75 and older, 65 and older if they're Indigenous, as well as some further um, healthcare uh, worker groups. Now, for, for us to start planning on phase two, um, phase two, we know that our focus and the principles, absolutely we've thought about that. Um, absolutely we have made those considerations. We've um, received some uh, preliminary recommendations from Dr. Henshaw, and that's done in consultation with the work that she does with the other chief MOHs across the country and the, uh, the SAC, the, the Special Advisory Committee. But for us to start making it very clear to Albertans what the, um, the, the phases of, or the, the subgroups uh, for the priority groups in, in phase two, we would need certainty from the federal government for us to be able to start planning the, the rollout, the community rollout of those you know, hundreds of thousands, if not uh, over a million Albertans to be included in phase two. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your question, Kevin. Operator, could you please put the next caller through? Janet French, CBC. Hi there, thanks for taking my call. I have a question for Minister Shandro and a question for Susan. I'll start with the Susan question. Um, I'm curious, if uh, if a child does in fact receive and, and is properly, um, you know, qualified to receive this, this gene therapy drug, what does that do to their prognosis? I mean, is, is it like, oh, they're going to live a normal life or it just improves their lifespan or uh, just wondering if you could explain how big of a difference it makes. And for Minister Shandro, just to follow up on Kevin's question, I'm curious that teachers have been pressing to be uh, in the second priority tranche for vaccinations. And yesterday, the four Metro school boards um, have said they have written to the government to say that teachers should be in the next echelon if you want to keep schools open. And I'm wondering where teachers are in the consideration, teachers and school employees, where they are in your consideration of that uh, priority list. Sure. Uh, Susie, uh, if you want to answer the first question. So in terms of treatment for SMA and uh, the examples that we have of children that have already received Zolgensma, um, the earlier you receive this treatment, the better the prognosis. So we have children that were um, identified through newborn screening, which is so important for identifying them early on, that you can't even tell they have SMA. Whereas without treatment, um, you know, they, we can't tell that they have SMA post-treatment with Solgensma. Whereas without treatment, they would very likely have passed on before the age of two. 
um, children that have been treated a little bit later, we know that there's examples of them not being able to move their arms and legs and suddenly they're rolling off a couch and sitting on the floor and reaching for things. And, and with this treatment, we know that it gets better and better with time. So um, it's a fairly new treatment, so we don't know the long-term future of it, but we sure know that it has an astounding impact on those babies. Um, I would really like to thank the Alberta government for seeing this need, uh, realizing the pressure on time on families uh, who are waiting and stepping up to make a difference in these children's lives because this is a decision that is saving lives. Thank you. Uh, and, and thanks, Janet, for your, your second question. Um, and so, great question. And, and I thank all these folks who are, are bringing these, um, these concerns to our attention. Um, and these are absolutely um, decisions we like to move forward on. But for us to do that, we very clearly need the federal government to give us clarity about the number of doses we're going to be receiving and when we're going to be getting them. We need them to advocate for Canada to be given higher priority. We see other nations um, not being affected by the, um, uh, what's, what's happening to the upgrades to the Belgian facility. We are getting in Canada uh, zero, from what I understand, from the, uh, the manufacturing in Michigan, uh, where uh, Pfizer also has a facility. Um, the other European countries that are also receiving shipments from, from Belgium, I understand, are not being affected like Canada is. We need the federal government to step up and advocate for Canadians so that we can provide this clarity and, and start getting uh, vaccinations, as, as these priority groups said, or the, these, uh, these groups are advocating to, to be included in, in, uh, as priority groups in phase two. But they, we need to give that clarity and, and we need to, to keep our schools open. We need to um, provide some certainty to the most vulnerable in the province. And for us to do that, we need the federal government to do their job. Thank you. Operator, could you please put the next caller through? Jesse Weiser, Global. Hi, Minister. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, how big of a concern is it that the EU is possibly looking at closing off exports of the vaccine? And can you confirm if all second doses have been cancelled? Well, no second doses have been cancelled. Sorry, uh, I probably should be repeating a negative, but uh, just to, to be clear, like that, that is not, never anything that we've said. That's not, not true at all. Um, second doses are, are now starting uh, for, for folks who got the, um, the, the very first, first doses. Um, we're, we're making sure that people are, are getting their second doses in, in a time that's um, um, looking at the data is, is safe and effective. And we're going to continue with that commitment to, to those folks who got those, those first doses. Um, when it comes to um, uncertainties with the, uh, the supply chain, um, there was a, uh, a meeting that we had as health ministers with the, uh, the, the, the federal health minister and, uh, and those who were involved in the vaccine uh, planning and, and rollout. Um, originally, what I was told uh, was that Canada would not be disproportionately affected by this, uh, um, this, this maintenance upgrade at the Belgian facility. Um, that appears to not be true. Um, and so that's the frustrating thing for us here in Alberta, is that um, we're not getting clarity from the federal government about how they are advocating for priority for, for Canada and ensuring that uh, there is going to be no disruption to the supply chain for, for the vaccines that we um, have as taxpayers through the federal government paid for through these purchase agreements. Um, I, I, we need the federal government to provide that certainty, provide that clarity and advocates more strongly for Canadians. We have time for two more questions. Operator, could you please put the next caller through? Dean Bennett, the Canadian Press. <clears throat> Thanks. Good morning, Minister. Uh, two questions then. Uh, the tra changing travel restrictions looks like it's going to be a, a big issue this week with the feds. Manitoba, as you know, has announced on Friday, interprovincial travelers now must quarantine for 14 days. You've made a change to your, obviously, to the, the pilot program, but would Alberta consider a similar move uh, with, as Manitoba is doing with interprovincial travel? And if so, why or why not? Sure. So, um so I guess, yeah, just, just the two questions then, or you said there was, there was two. Is, is that the two that you needed, Dean? <laughs> All right, sorry, I, I, 
I guess was just the why or why not was the second question. Well, look, um, you're, you're right. We, we did make changes. We, we saw, um, uh, you know, concerns with the, uh, some of the, the, the variants that have been um, shown to be more infectious than the current strain that we've seen uh, of COVID throughout North America. Um, we've seen them spread throughout the world. Um, we, we know that uh, that is a concern. That's why we wanted to work with the federal government in making those changes to the border pilot project. Um, we, we know that there's um, travel that needs to be made through, through provinces. We're not looking at, at um, advocating for, for any changes to interprovincial travel at this time. But um, throughout the pandemic, uh, we, of course, as, um, as Alberta, will continue to work with uh, our other provinces and, um, and, and understand their concerns, try to work our best with them. We, we do still need some, some travel through the provinces. We hope we can continue to work with them um, and uh, to make sure that, look, the, the, the main goal is make sure that we, we limit community spread of, of COVID throughout our, our provinces, throughout the country. Um, but, but doing it in, in ways that um, are smart and thoughtful. Um, it, for example, going back to the pilot project, these are ways where we can um, and encourage people, give them the incentive for them to have that, that testing you know, as they land in the airport as well as, as day six and seven, making it more safe for, for travel into Canada. And we're, we're willing to work with uh, other provinces to find other innovative ways as well, something like that with um, uh, interprovincial travel, but we're we're not advocating for any restrictions on interprovincial travel this time, um, and um, we'll we'll continue though to um, as we we review that data in the interprovincial travel, and as people come to Alberta, um, they're getting the the um, uh, the recommendations from the chief medical officer of health and understanding what the risks are related to that. Operator, could you please put the final caller through? Final question comes from Lisa Johnson of Post Media. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, I, I've got a, a follow-up that's not related to this announcement, but I'm wondering, what is the, you've mentioned that, that the decisions would be made on a case-by-case -case basis, Minister. What is the potential cost or, or budget cap for this funding? Well, like there, there is no, no budget cap. I think what we're, we're looking for is, is focusing on, on kids not falling through the cracks as, as we're waiting for the, um, the, the rest of the processes that, that need to be done for, for, um, for drugs to, to become approved and listed in the, the formulary here in, in Alberta. We just don't want kids to fall through the cracks. So the case-by-case -case basis is making sure that nobody is, is coming up to um, a, an age that would then um, adversely affect their eligibility criteria um, after there, there is funding. So this is um, an opportunity for us to work with the, uh, the drug manufacturer, uh, Novartis, to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, we will now reach out to the physicians who provide treatment to, to these children to understand that they can reach out to, to their patients and they can make applications on their patients' behalf. Thank you, everyone, for joining. The news conference is now ended. Thank you.